And welcome back to another Interfacing Linux, a show where we plug things into penguins and see if they explode. This week, we're going to take a look at the M Audio Profiler 2626, originally released in 2008 for about 479 pounds. That's roughly $580. It features 8 octane preamps, 16 channels of ADAT input, two front panel high impedance instrument jacks, and dual headphone outs. Sound on Sound really liked this unit back in the day. What did they call it? They called it excellent value for the money with a good sound quality. And the best part is you can pick one up today in 2020 for under $200. But what's the catch? Yeah, always a catch, right? That's right. Here's the catch. Do you see it? Mm, it's one of these. It's Firewire. So you're going to have to go out and spend a whopping $30. $30 for PCIe. PCIe, that's what they are now. Fire Noodle Receptacle. You probably don't want to search for that with Safe Search Off, if we're being perfectly honest. Anyway. Let's take a look at it. We're going to plug some mics into it. And by the way, this week, I'm going to be testing a Clark CT1. So let me know how it sounds in the comments. Then we're going to find out if it knows how to guitar. And I'm going to test the latency. And we'll see if we can get it to generate a few X runs in on door. Then I'll come back, tell you what works and what nopes. Here it is, the M-Audio 2626. It is heavy, it's well-built, well-constructed. And, uh, well, let's take a look at it. The first two jacks are the only way that you can get quarter-inch in with a preamp. Everything else is going to get bypassed. But we have banked phantom power. You have one through four, five through eight, two headphone jacks. You can do your own mixes and a master volume slider. Slider knob. Speaking of knobs, that's how you activate the pad. I think it's a 20 dB pad. You just pull that out and it'll knock it down. On the back, power, firewire, pass through. We do have this port if you are lucky enough to get it. The breakout cables. Flip this around. There we go. World clock, MIDI in, MIDI out, and SPDIF. Followed by that, we have a lot of ADAT. A lot. Yeah, 16 in with A and B, and 16 out with A and B. And all of it works. It's amazing. And your standard eight analog out and eight combo jacks, which uh, you can bypass the preamps coming in through quarter inch. Neat. Really, the only thing that you need to do for the 2626 for setup is edit your blacklist.conf. If you're unfamiliar with this, it's something you have to do if the ALSA drivers are um, broken. And, well, they don't work for the 2626. So make sure you blacklist at least sound dice. But once that's done, we can start playing around with it. I'm going to open Fado Mixer. It'll take it a moment to get everything configured, but this will give you access to, I think, effectively everything inside of the 2626. Full disclosure, I've never really played with this outside of just kind of clicking through it and seeing what options were available. I do all of my mixing through a door, but uh, best I can tell, you have access to all the volume controls. And you can do uh, types of routing, it would appear. Again, I haven't really played with it, but I mean, there's settings for master volume knobs, and this is where you would select, you know, clock source, sample rate, all that fun stuff. This is the Golden Age D2 Large Diaphragm Dynamic Microphone running through a mic booster. CT1 directly into the M Audio Profiler 2626. This is the OSP DL330 high performance professional instrument microphone. Um, it's dynamic, plugged directly into the M Audio Profiler 2626. 
And last but not least, we have the AT2020 condenser microphone running directly into the M-Audio Provider 2626. Right. Short and sour. What works? Basically everything. That internal mixer. That is brilliant. You can do all types of bizarre, fun, interesting things that I don't want to mess with because I'm be honest with you, that UI is a nightmare, but it is available to play with. ADAT. All of it works. I've tested it with our FCA 1616. In and out. No problems. Didn't drop anything. Spit of Brilliant. It's there. Preamps are transparent. That is legit. That's really what they say on the tin, and they are. They don't add anything that I could really notice to the sound. And you can bypass them with quarter-inch jacks. I mean, it's a physical, it's a, it's a different line. So you legitimately can bypass. That's not something I've run into very often, and that, that's just a great thing. Dual headphone outs that you can use to assign your own mixes. So I can take, you know, on two separate buses, I could have a mix minus set up for me for, you know, whatever I want with vocal music and a different mix on the second set. That's great. This is the first interface that I've had that allows just that functionality. That's brilliant. And it's stable, stable, stable. Never had an issue with it. And I probably have done 25, 30 shows with it. Not even a hiccup. So that's what we use to record everything here at LGCC. Now let's talk about the problems. There are a few problems. Basically, the great thing about the preamps, transparent, but they're also kind of on the quiet side. Even back in the day, they were kind of on the quiet side. I would say you might be able to get about 40 to 43 dB of usable gain out of them. If you're going to be using 
a large diaphragm dynamic mic. It doesn't matter if it's one of these, the golden age, a shore, a road, um, anything like that. You are going to need a fet head, cloud lifter, cathedral pipes, or you might try one of these. Uh, what was this again? This is the Clark mic booster to get you up to operating level or just get an external preamp. But, 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 it also has banked phantom power. That's still a con. It's not a big issue. That I might be nitpicking, but, you know, it's banked one through four and four through, well, five through eight. And I really prefer individual phantom power on off. Feel free to disagree on that one. And finally, I could never get it to work in standalone mode. But I honestly think that's more from like a lack of trying on my part. Because I just cut it on with nothing plugged into it and tried to get a signal in. Signal out. Didn't do anything. You might have to go in with um Fado Mixer to make that work. I think it's probably possible if you put the time. And finally, you do have to blacklist the um also drivers. Because they're knackered. Just they give you the false illusion that they're going to work. But everything just goes to pot after about 10 minutes and, and it gets all scrambling. It's from the uh, Sound Firewire Improve. The uh, same guy doing the ALSA support for the Fire Studio, the pre Sodas Fire Studio and the Digi Design. So this is three for three that anything, um, I'm not picking on you, man, but those three devices do not work with your ALSA driver, so you will have to use the um, FATO drivers for that, which are rock solid. Um, hopefully, the ALSA kernel driver will mature to a more stable state. I look forward to that. All right, that's it. I hope I was able to answer a question, possibly three, and always, as always, let's think the beautiful party people who make this series possible. That's right. I'm talking about our patrons. They are a beautiful, surly, maybe even squirrely lot, but they are them. Check them out. And uh, by the way, if you have some old equipment laying around, don't send it to a landfill. Send it to me. Link in the address. Link in the, link to the address. Yeah, try that in the description. Cool. Now get out there and make something.